I'm just wondering what you would off the top of your head, uh, other than it being a historical, um, um, what are the strongest, would you say, Achilles heels points that you could, that you could give uh, yes. that would cripple uh, the Calvinist ideology? You need to demonstrate from the sound exegesis of scriptures, Christ came to die for the whole human race and desires the salvation of every creature that will destroy Calvinism in the sense that they will end up having to then argue for what's called the two wills of God. A lot of people don't know. Yeah, the secret oh, will. Yeah. Yep, you, you know that. You used to be a Calvinist. So the, a lot of Calvinists will tell you, well, they can see it in Scripture. They'll say, well, there is God's desire, Thelema, and God's decree. God can desire salvation of everyone, but he's decreed the salvation of the elect. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be disrespectful of Calvinists, but this two wills of God almost sounds like, and I'm trying to be respectful, a schizophrenic God that desires one thing but goes about and does something else. Hammer those points. And what let me out of Calvinism was the destruction of limited atonement. Focus on that. Mm -hmm. Hammer it. Hammer it. Hammer it. Say, wait, Christ dies for everyone. Go here. Uh, I'll give you an example. If God only comes to draw the elect and the elect will come to saving faith because they'll be regenerated, right? Mm -hmm. Here's some passages that also pose problems. Watch here. So. These are ones that also messed up my mind. And I'll explain what I mean. Watch here. Because Christ only comes to draw the elect, and the elect will come to be saved, right? Yeah. Okay, let me give you the, all of these. Okay, 41, 44. Okay, Deuteronomy 5, 29. Oh, that they had, a, had such a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments all the days, that it may, may be well with them and with their sons forever. Mm -hmm. Here, God's showing, I wish, I wish all of them had a heart to fear me and obey me so it can go well with them. But hold on. Calvinism is true. If irresistible grace is true, unconditional election is true, then God would give them such a heart because apart from God regenerating them, they can't have that heart. That's good. Yeah. So why doesn't he give it to them? Uh, his Gnostic secret will, right? He got it. <laughs> Okay, well, it's repeated here again. Isaiah 48, 18. Yeah. If only you had paid attention to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the ways of the sea. See, again, if mm -hmm. only you paid attention. But God, you know they're dead in sin, total depravity. They cannot unless you regenerate them. So why aren't you regenerating them? Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch. That was Isaiah 48, 18, right? Yeah. This one here. Woo. Yeah. Psalm 81, 8 to 13. Psalm 81, 8 to 13. Hear, O my people, and I will testify against you. O Israel, if you would listen to me, let there be no strange God among you, and you shall not worship a foreign God. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice, and Israel was not willing to obey me. So I released them over to the stubbornness of their heart, that they would walk in their own devices, Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. How the hell does this make sense? In light of total depravity, unconditional election, irresistible grace, limited told me, because here he's saying, oh, if they only listen to me and walk in my ways, but they refuse, so now I hand them over. Does that make sense? Uh, no. Go ahead. What is it? Oh, that doesn't make sense at all. This is good. Uh, okay. Two final one. And mute yourself yeah. for these ones. Okay. Now, remember, Calvinism teaches that God has causally predetermined everything, even every evil act. Jeremiah 19, verse 5. And have built the high places of Baal. My people are burning their sons in the fire as burnt offering of Baal, a thing which I never commanded or spoke of, nor did it ever come upon my heart. How the hell is this consistent with Calvinism? When according to Calvinism, God even decreed, predetermined, that Israel would offer up children as sacrifices to Baal. But here he says, I never commanded it. It didn't even enter my heart for me to have you do such a thing. And the final one, which was the Achilles heel for me. Luke 19, 41, 44. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, Luke 19, 41, 44. We know Jesus cannot lie. Jesus is not a play actor. He's God in the flesh and he's the truth. So notice, God in the flesh, his reaction. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he cried over it, saying, If you knew in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they've been hidden from your eyes. 
For the days will come upon. Notice he's saying, I came to bring you peace, not destruction. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. And they will level you. They will level you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Now look, Christ is saying that he had come to give them peace, but because they refused to acknowledge him and realize why he came, he will now hand them over and their children to be destroyed because they did not recognize the time of their visitation. Now, you don't need to guess what this visitation was because earlier in the gospel, you're told God came to visit them for what purpose? Watch here. Watch here. Luke 1, 67, 69, and then 76 to 77. Here. Luke 1, 67, 69. Now, Zechariah is filled with the Holy Spirit, so it's not his own whims and desires. This is the Spirit moving him to utter these words. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he visited. Do you see it? There's that word, same form of the Greek. You did not recognize the time of your visitation. He visited it. Why was he visiting them? And accomplished redemption for his people and raised up a horn of salvation for us. So salvation, redemption. So he came to redeem and save. And he raised up the Savior in the house of David, his servant, the Messiah. In case that wasn't clear, Luke 1, 76 to 77. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. Why? For you will go before the Lord to make ready his ways, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of sins. So Luke tells us God came to visit them, to redeem them and save them by revealing to them the way of receiving forgiveness of sin. But then Jesus starts crying here because he says the people he came to visit, watch here, the people he came to visit did not recognize their visitation. Here. Where is it right here? I'm sorry. Watch here. Same word. They can't get around this. Here, right here. He's weeping. Weeping. He cried. If you only knew in this day, even you the things that would make for peace, but now they're hidden. Because they're hidden, because you don't recognize who I am and why I came, you're going to be dashed to the ground. You'll be destroyed, Jerusalem, and your children, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Now, let me show you how this obliterates Calvinism. Let me show you out. According to Tulip, Christ comes to save the elect and only the elect. The elect will never be lost because the Spirit will regenerate them, make them alive, and they will run to Christ, not reject Christ. Here Christ is crying, heartbroken, over the people he came to visit for the express purpose of saving them and redeeming them, but because they didn't recognize who he is, and because they didn't turn to him, he's now left with no choice but hand them to be destroyed. How if Tulip is true? 